an angle of 45 degrees or even more, go uh, to the distal by keeping contact with the mesial tooth. And let's start by uh, screwing in our uh, scan bodies. And after we have our scan bodies in place, we'll do things as follows. First, we're going to scan the teeth surrounding the area and be sure we have a clean mesh. Like you see here, I want these teeth to be as perfectly imaged as possible. Green meshes. Why we do this? Because the scan of the scan bodies is a different mesh and is going to be uh, superimposed on the working arch, on the um, operation stage. We start by scanning teeth. Then we are going to stop, make sure that the data we acquired is perfect. Then we are going to optimize the data and start again. What I want you to see here is that we use um, the HD function for imaging this part, uh, for imaging the scan bodies because they have um, the flat parts and the um, uh, angles that are much more uh, correct uh, imaged by the um, uh, by the HD function that gathers many more points than the SD function. Also, I like uh, turning uh, the focal distance to the max so that uh, I can get as many, as much information as possible in, in this stage and as as far away as possible. Now I'm going to start and image the scan bodies after I optimized the image that I did before. What I want you to see here, I am trying to image the scan bodies, never losing contact with uh, the mesial teeth. Why I do this is because the teeth are completely green and they will always act, uh, act as a um, uh, guarantee that the scan bodies are correctly, uh, correctly scanned. Also, I try to angle the, the tip of the scanner to the distal, going from the, this mesial piece. And I'm, as you can see in the scanning video, I always have part of my teeth inside the scannable area so that the scanner knows exactly where it is when it adds data to the scanner. I am angling the tip of the scanner from every possible angle from the mesial to the distal, keeping this mesial teeth there and I'm adding and this way I have both distal scan bodies imaged on their vestibular mesial and lingual sides. The distal side is not complete now and to do this I am going to uh, go back in contact with the mesial teeth and I'm gonna angle the scan tip at a degree of 40 uh, at a, an angle of 45 degrees or even more and go uh, to the distal by keeping contact with the mesial tooth. And uh, in this way, the scanner see, always sees the teeth, but also starts seeing the distal part of the scanner. Let's we'll see this now. We already have the distal part of our first scan body. And now we're gonna start and add some data to the second one. I am trying to keep contact with the teeth. This is not always possible, but it's the best way to do it. And when imaging the second scan body, I always try to have some uh, information from the first one so that it can uh, be a better scan. Okay, now we finished this stage as well. So now that the scanning is done, I would like to also share my thoughts on uh, two settings that I would like to um, be correctly explained. And um, on this part, let's talk about occlusal settings. Let's see. They are located in the post-processing part. I will turn them off. And I generally do so in uh, distal cases um, uh, because uh, in these cases, the software tries to match the models, and because it doesn't find any parts to match on the implant side, it's, kind of, it's also possible to distort these said models as positions one to one to the other. 
So this in this kind of scans, I will disable occlusion alignment. In other cases where occlusion is very stable, I try to um, I like to use it as much as possible, and I use it uh, check on the extreme right here. Also, uh, if you like filling holes, my advice to you would be to never check uh, use uh, neighboring colors to fill holes because if you do so, and the software approximates filling a hole. Um, it, this is what it does. It's just an approximation of, uh, of the surface that is missing. Now, the technician will never know if you actually scan that area and that area is correct or the software did it. So if you uncheck use neighboring colors, the technician will see that the closed holes are grayed out. So that information is not actually done by you, but by the software.